Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Gabe with Indigo Software, genuine Microsoft software for less. In this video, we're gonna show you guys how to set up a VPN on Windows Server 2025. Before we get started with this video, if you're interested in purchasing Windows 10, Windows 11, Microsoft Office, or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll have those links down below. So without further ado, let's jump in. All right, guys, so I'm logging in to my domain controller. This is our licensed version of Windows Server 2025 that we use for the channel. All right, and all of my connections have just finished loading. I'm currently in the server manager. Uh, we do have an option to install the VPN services with PowerShell. Just for ease of use, we're gonna show you guys in the server manager today, and we'll quickly show you how you would go about it in PowerShell. So in case you're not already in the server manager, we can always find it by hitting our start key and usually it'll be in the pinned app section, or we could always search for it. And again, we're just gonna start right in Server Manager. And if you followed along with our tutorials in the past, some of these steps will be the same. So we're gonna to go to Manage here in the top right, click Add Roles and Features, and this is gonna bring up our um, Add Roles and Features wizard. We're gonna zoom in on this a little bit so you guys can see it better. So on the first page, this is just telling us before we begin, main thing to take away is that the administrator account has a strong password. So we'll click next, and we're gonna leave this as a role or feature-based installation. Here we want to select our server from the server pool. We'll click next. Okay, and then in server roles, we're looking for remote access. We're simply gonna check this box and we'll press next. We can leave the features section as default. And then here we've got our remote access page. All right, we'll click next. Under our role services, I'm simply gonna check next to routing. And then notice in this little box, we want to include management tools if applicable. And it's also giving us a summary of the services that we're gonna be installing. So I'll click add features here, and we should have routing and direct access and VPN both checked. So once you've confirmed that, press next again. We can click next on the next two pages. On the role services, we can leave this. And then here I'll click restart, and I'll select yes. And then let's finally, let's go ahead and click install. We'll come back once this is done. All right, guys, and then we're gonna show you guys the PowerShell method of installing. So we'll just enter our Windows PowerShell. Let me go ahead and adjust the size here so you can see it. All right, and once we're in PowerShell, we're gonna start with the install-windows feature command, and we're gonna type in a remote access, and then we're going to add another space here, and a dash include management tools. So we're specifying to include management tools. Let's press enter. All right, we'll let this load for a second. All right, and then we just have to install the direct access VPN. So same command, install dash windows feature, direct access dash VPN, and then dash include management tools, and we'll press enter. All right, and we can see that that was a success. The remote access role is what gives the server the VPN capability. Again, we showed you earlier through server manager, but it can just as easily be done here in PowerShell. All right, so once we're done with that, you can see that we don't need to restart the computer. So for now, I'll close this down. Let's go back into server manager. All right. Once we're here, we're gonna to go to tools and we're looking for routing and remote access, which we'll see here. We'll click there. All right, and once we're here, we're going to right click our server name, which is here, and we're gonna click configure and enable routing and remote access. This is going to bring up a wizard. We'll click next. We'll leave this as remote access. Here we'll click VPN. Basically, we're actually turning on the VPN service here and this will prepare it to accept connections from our clients. So we'll press next again. Okay, and then on the VPN connection page, I'll select my primary network interface, which is ethernet, and I'll press next. I'll go ahead and do automatically. And for here, I will elect to not use radius server. All right, and we'll click finish. Now we can access various settings underneath our server. We're gonna right click our server name here and let's hit properties. So we can configure our IP address assignment here. The server needs to know how to hand out IP addresses to VPN clients. We can either let the existing DHCP server provide them or create a static pool just for VPN users. And so for this demo, let's go ahead and set up a small static pool. Once we're here, let's go to the IPv4 tab and I'm gonna choose dynamic host configuration protocol, which is already selected. We already have the DHCP server selected. Let's actually choose static address pool. And then here I'll just define a range. So I'll click add, we'll add our starting IP address and we will add the end IP address. 
actually, sorry, I made a mistake here. This was supposed to be 50 and this is supposed to be one. And I'll press OK. Here we'll press Apply and we'll press OK. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is configure VPN protocols. So I'll click into ports. So here we can see the name of the ports on the left-hand side. We can allow or not allow certain protocols. They're all inactive right now. The protocols that I can configure are GRE. We've got our GRE protocols. We've got IKE V2. This is modern, stable, and recommended for mobile clients. And then we have SSTP. And this uses SSL TLS over port 443, which is good for firewall traversal. To allow or not allow certain ports, we'll right click and hit properties. And then we'll just type on one of our mini ports here and we'll press configure. So we can either set our maximum amount of ports or we can set this number to zero if we want to not allow the port. And we can do that for any of our VPN protocols. All right guys, so step five in the process of configuring a VPN is to configure our firewall and port forwarding. For clients to connect from the internet, we'll need to open or forward the correct ports on the firewall. The exact steps highly depend on your router or firewall brand. So we're not gonna show that here, but for SSTP, <coughs> you'll need TCP 443 for L2TP and IKE V2. You'll need UDP 500 and 4500 and PPTP needs TCP 1723. And then finally, step six is to configure user access. So we're either gonna access Active Directory users and computers or local users and groups. For this machine, I will be using local users and groups. So I'm gonna right click on start here, we'll press computer management. In the left-hand pane here, we've got our system tools. Underneath that, we'll find our local users and groups. And again, if your server is joined to a domain, you may not see this option because domain controllers don't use local users and groups, they use Active Directory instead. So once we're here, we're gonna find our user. I can create a new user for this example. So I'll do right click new user. We'll just call this user John. I'll check the middle two here. I'll give John a password as well. All right, and then once we've got our user, we're gonna edit the user who should have VPN access. So we'll right click on John. Let's hit properties. We're gonna go to the dial in tab and for set network access permission, we're going to allow access. So VPN only works if a user account has permission to connect. And this is where we grant that permission so that when they try to log in from the outside, the server will allow it. I hit apply and then okay. All right, your Windows Server 2025 VPN is successfully configured. As always, be sure to let us know in the comments if you have any questions about any parts of that process. All right, guys, so that's gonna do it for today's video. If you have any questions about anything we covered, feel free to drop those in the comments below and we'll get back with you as soon as we can. Again, if you're interested in purchasing genuine Microsoft software at a great price, be sure to check out Indigo Software. We'll have all those links in the description as well. As our channel continues to grow, we're constantly looking for new video topic ideas. If you have any ideas of your own, we'd love to know what those are. Most viewer commented video requests get made into actual videos on our channel. Lastly, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it helps to support our channel. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.